So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm glad that you chose my session. Uh, it's called GraphQL and UI, UI5. So, at first part, it's big part, we will talk about GraphQL itself, and then we will try to use uh, queries, uh, GraphQL queries in our UI5 applications. So, uh, oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. And uh, but first, a little bit about me. I came from Russia. I work in one of the largest uh, consulting company. Uh, it's BDO. I am lead UI developer. Uh, most, uh, in general, we use UI5 in, in our developments, but we're looking forward for some um, other web, application, uh, web frameworks for backend or fr frontend. And... Um, uh, GraphQL is one one of these uh, backend solutions th that we're looking forward. Uh, so, uh, and GraphQL is posi positioned uh, as alternative to REST APIs. Uh, let's figure out why we need an al alternative. Uh, because REST API looks like it's solution that test by, by time. Um, for example, consider a typical shipping cart shop, shopping cart app. Uh, uh, to request orders in, in the, this card, we need to make um, a REST API request. It might look, look looks like, like this. Uh, we're just fetching a card uh, road with ID 1, and then we have uh, a list of uh, orders here uh, with amount, price, and ID of, of it, items uh, that included in this order. Uh, so then, to fetch uh, additional data about each item in our uh, order, oh, it's too, too fast. So we, we need to fetch um, uh, information about any particular, particular, particular item here. Uh, and uh, then, if our items have uh, different images, for example, for some slide carousel or something like this, we will fetch three more requests. Uh, so it's se seven round trips total. Uh, uh, every, I think every, everyone agrees that is an excellent architecture and everyone di did it like this. Of course not. Uh, Usually, uh, we're using complex endpoints. When we need some nest, nested data, we will fetch it like this. We write some attribute, attributes like expand and choose entity set uh, from which we want to select uh, fields. But um, there is one more pro problem with uh, querying as URL. Uh, it's overfetching. We we need particular fields from our queries. Uh, for example, uh, we usually need sm smaller amount of, of fields. For example, on desktop app, we need more fields. On mobile app, we querying same API to, to get, to get a just name without description, for example. So uh, we're using uh, ad additional attributes. But w when it's come to... Uh, Deep, deep nesting, so we can, we need to invent some syntax to make our expanded queries to to be uh, to to have the select, selected fields. Yeah. Uh, but when query gets deeper, it's uh, our query becomes unreadable and, and enormous, and uh, we should uh, do something with, with this. So w one more. Approach for uh, for make uh, deep and uh, complex queries. It's custom queries. So I need data for my card, and I want exactly what I want. Uh, so it's pretty easy to build one query. It's something like this: very special query with all required data. So we are good. We have all, all required data without additional attributes. But when it's come to uh, our, our application will grow, and we we get mobile application. There, there is come very special endpoint for mobile, and then adds 
uh, for some some modular window where <laughs> we uh, need description in and discounts and then it's uh, ev still keeps evolving and it becomes version two <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, my maintenance of this kind of queries become a true head edge uh, so so let's finally look at GraphQL. Uh, raise your hands. Who uh, heard something about it? Oh, there's a lot. And maybe someone already used it, tried to make some sandbox or something. Yeah, that's true. And okay, you, you're free. Uh, who of you using it gets in productive? Or maybe no, no. Okay, we're not using it. Good, actually, just. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we, before we start talking about what GraphQL is, uh, let's talk about what GraphQL not, is not, is not, yeah. GraphQL is not. It's not graph database. Uh, it's common misunderstanding of GraphQL. It's not database at all. <laughs> yeah, it's second misunderstanding. And it's not any kind of library by itself. It's uh, data query language. It uh, give, gives us ability to fle flexible calling our API uh, and fetch uh, data with that shape it uh, as uh, as our application requires. Uh, oh, one sec. Ah, okay. It's just specification. It can be implemented in any language. So it already have a lot of implementation on modern languages. There is not a bug, because I said modern languages. So, uh, uh, but uh, if we talk about SAP landscape, we now have uh, SAP HANA Access Advanced. Uh, so it provides Node.js support uh, from f out of the box. So we can easily implement GraphQL endpoint um, in some SAP landscape. And querying data from SAP HANA, for example. So, and the last uh, topic is, uh, it works uh, as additional layer between client and server. Uh, there, there, they can uh, comfortable, comfortable communicate between each other. Uh, and uh, it backend uh, database agnostic, so uh, it's even, can have multiple database and uh, can make joints of multiple database. It, it all depends on backend implementation, so it gives uh, gives us uh, insane f flexibility. Oh, damn it! <laughs> so, wait a sec. I need to to change my view. So, GraphQL comes to open source uh, at uh, tw 2015, uh, so it's getting uh, cool, cool tooling every day, I think. So one of common tool to uh, which used with GraphQL is querying tool. Um, and there we can write any query to any GraphQL endpoint, and uh, you see? Everyone sees what's, what's happening here? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, just simple, let's look at simple GraphQL query. Uh, at first level, we write uh, query keyword, it's like root for all uh, our queries, and one particular, particular <laughs> It's hard words, <laughs> particular request. Uh, uh, then, uh, it's very similar with, uh, most sim similarities with OData, so I will try to explain you with terms of OData. Uh, first, uh, if we want to fetch uh, entity set in terms of, uh, of OData, uh, we, uh, we should provide it name, there is, we have all films uh, endpoint. It's like local endpoints of GraphQL. Uh, and um, 
then we uh, all films will return us uh, as we can see uh, array of film entities and uh, we should provide it's mandatory to provide fields in graphql we can just say uh, return me return me everything like asterisk uh, everything from from this entity you mandatory should choose field so we're trying to return all films and let's add director of, of that film. So here we go. We receive exactly what we want. So, uh, and um, next, if we want to expand uh, our, our query to more nested fields, we just write uh, planets. It's like planets, it's about Star Wars films, so there's planets in film. Uh, planets and we sh should provide fields here too. So as I said, fields are mandatory. So we just want to see all planets with their name here. Uh, then uh, if, um, if we talk about Odata, uh, Odata uh, we have an uh, entity type query. So we can fetch uh, any, some particular film with uh, and pass pass params uh, to it. Uh, actually, we can pass params to any part of our query. So we can pass param to title, and uh, on the backend side, it uh, catches in resolver fun function uh, that will return required data. So it can be parameterized uh, and. Uh, it still gives us more flexibility with building GraphQL API. Um, so, um, and uh, let's comment this. And when we fetch a query for particular film, it's like filter. It's it's custom queries. It's not like a data. Just every type ha has a title field. No, uh, it's uh, it's specified only for film. Um, and um, uh, one, one more cool feature is if we want to fetch two films at once and with different uh, field set, we can just copy it, um, and name it like uh, New Hope here, New Hope, and here we can uh, call it not new hope, <laughs> light. Uh, okay, and just maybe cut something. So we have uh, aliases for any fields. We can even alias uh, inner fields of, or, or in any part of our query. So uh, it's useful when uh, API changes uh, on the server side, but your views are binded to some particular field names, and they change field um, title to, uh, to, fill, uh, to field name, for example, uh, and or they changed uh, API to field name. No. <laughs> okay, we, we can uh, change our aliases for any, any part of our query as, as we wish. Uh, this uh, this main point. So just check it out. So uh, and uh, one of the powerful part of GraphQL it's it's HEMA. Uh, it's not uh, unexpected for those who know what what is metadata of or data is. So GraphQL has its own metadata. It can be called uh, as double underscore schema, and then we can fetch it uh, like any other queries, just uh, keep it uh, nested, and we, we, we will get full schema of our fields, of, of available params for the, that fields, and it, it uh, will return in one request, you can fetch schema with other requests, it's, it's like batching, uh, so, uh, and uh, schema provides us uh, cool features, like uh, we, we can just ch check schema, all fields, their types, 
and uh, after generated documents, so we can check any query queries that available on that service and uh, look at types uh, which the, that service can, can provide. And uh, schema makes GraphQL a stri strict type of la language, <laughs> so you can uh, just add new fields, but uh, but you still can fl flexibly uh, rearrange queries to get the result you, you wish. Uh, so, and next, next, next. Uh, so, okay, next topic is about uh, UI5 and GraphQL. So, it's, as I said, it's similar with, um, uh, with the data. So, we can, we can think about something like a server side model for GraphQL. But at first, let's look how it can be in wild life. I don't know. <laughs> you can just make a you can just make Ajax call or any fetch call, and uh, with method post. Uh, I don't say that uh, GraphQL have only single endpoint. There is no multiple endpoints where you can try to fetch any kind of data. You had, have only a single endpoint. And we post uh, uh, post our query as string uh, with setting <laughs> content type. Um, and then we just uh, receive successful or not successful response, and then we handle it. You can just put it in into JSON model or use it as you wish. Um, uh, and and then, then I talked about GraphQL model. Um, so let me show you my thoughts, <laughs> how we can implement it. Um, as, as usual, uh, as uh, our data model, we should provide uh, a GraphQL endpoint to, to model constructor. Uh, then we, then I extend it to, to bindings is context binding and list binding. Um, uh, and now we can bind our entities uh, and controls like this. So it's um, just list uh, with all films as we've seen before. Uh, it will be uh, used as <coughs> as entity set, as, as I showed. Uh, uh, and additional parameter for this kind of queries. Uh, it's uh, GraphQL, it's query, query itself. Uh, and um, if we bind context, uh, we can bind it uh, same way, just building uh, a film, film ID in this case, just if routing matches, <laughs> we get film ID and bind uh, against pa parameterized uh, entity set. So it looks, looks really like OData. So uh, let's... Let's look at this action. So we have a, a list of uh, of our uh, films. Uh, there is in network we already see two requests. Uh, first request is options because there is cor course um, request, and second will will show that that it it fetches uh, all films data and. It alias it with some hash because there is hard, there is was hard to d detect wh which query for each binding related. So I just make a, make a little hash for all films, uh, and then after response uh, request is uh, successfully returns our data, I just put uh, data to to each. Uh, to each binding uh, byte hash. 
So then we uh, selecting a film and see uh, additional requests. Uh, it's uh, it's have uh, hash as well, hash of film with ID and required fields. So and if we just refresh the page, there is, will be two bindings. Uh, it's list binding and context binding at the same time. Uh, it's, it's not DevTools. So there is a single request. And it, it has two requests at once. So it's like batching from a data. And we can just ch check sort page. And when we refresh page, we, we receive expected result, I hope, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, OK, with the trick queries for three bindings. So we have only one request, and we, we received all required data with nested fields for tables, for example, and any shape we, we want. So uh, in conclusion, what I want to say. Uh, GraphQL is power, power, powerful querying tool. Uh, as I seen in Keynote today, uh, UI5 team looking forward to it too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, GraphQL is not supposed to replace REST API or OData. It's just one more way to do clients client server interactions. There is a lot of stuff uh, we can do on the backend side, but my <laughs> my slides not about uh, how to work with GraphQL from uh, as full stack developer. So. It, it just provides a flexible querying tool, but it maybe not fits you, you needs. Uh, you need to check it by yourself. If you have multiple screens, you have mobile apps, and uh, your, your entities is nested enough, to you should think about GraphQL. That's it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.